Right, so we last <clears throat> left off um, talking about France as the example and inspiration for the concept of absolutism for monarchies. Uh, Austria had a more complicated time at trying to make um, this come into being. One, it was a multinational empire. Uh, going by the Holy Roman Empire, it attempted to be an empire as such on the model of ancient Rome, uh, ruled by the Habsburgs. But uh, this was really, you know, it's been referred to as a so-called empire often with little uh, controlling of the 300 states within its realm. It did create a standing army uh, with help by a Polish-led multinational army, uh, which was uh, um, saved Hungary. Um, it agreed to accept uh, as hereditary monarchs, um, and its three realms were Austria, Bohemia, and Hungary. Uh, but again, there there was there there was not the ability to consolidate power here um, in the way that King Louis was able to in, in France, although attempted. Then we have the Prussian Empire, uh, um, our Prussian state, should I say? Uh, growth of Austria and Prussia. Here's the map to look at this. This is all a little bit confusing. I realize in terms of just, you know, Prussia doesn't even exist anymore. Um, what comes out of it ends up being a state such as Germany later on. Um, but uh, one of the differences that was happening here compared to, let's say, France, is that the nobles had complete control over the peasants. Um, they were serfs and they had uh, and, and then in turn they gave a loyal a military service for French peasants they were technically free they weren't so uh, beholden to the nobles and so in a sense you can think about it this way is that the peasants were more um, at the bequest or, or the mercy of the nobles than necessarily of the leader, uh, the king of Prussia. Okay, so that's just kind of some of the differences there to think about um, that they had to deal with. Now in England, uh, the English alternative um, does have kind of its unique story. Um, some often kind of point out that the, that the British or the English like to um, think of their history as being more uh, that the, that, the, that the evolution of the balance of power between the monarch and the parliament was a much more civil set of circumstances. And, uh, of course, there's no revolution, um, you know, that, like what we'll see in, in France. But there's their own set of uh, power plays to deal with. So, Stuart Rule in 1603... Uh, the throne was passed to King James, Scotland, um, uh, ruling as King James the first. Okay, um, that's the thing. Sometimes they change their names to become king. It's always a little tricky. He aimed to establish absolute monarchy as well, um, and his son Charles the first sought to bypass Parliament. Well, how successful was that? Um, mainly, parliamentarians were. Calvinist, okay, Puritans, and they considered Anglican, Anglicanism too close to Catholicism. Anglican, the Anglican Church had the king as the head of the church too, right? So do you see a little bit of a power play there? They were both Protestants, meaning they were both uh, uh, denominations of Christianity against the Catholic Church, but they were different. I have this picture to the right to simply show that for many you would think this looks like a Catholic uh, assembly, but this is in fact Anglican. So there were a lot of practices in terms of dress and and uh, all sorts of manners of worship that were very similar to Catholicism. The Puritans were more, as we talked about back um, when we mentioned Calvin, was more kind of based on the Bible strictly, um, and it got rid of a lot of the, the uh, practices that would be visibly uh, look close to Roman Catholicism. Um, the Stuart Kings 
uh, stood for absolutism and Anglican supremacy. Okay, so that's where the, 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 the Stuart Kings were at. And Parliament stood against both. So there was a tension between the English King and Parliament. Um, and Parliament ends up uh, um, getting um, shut down, essentially. This is what the 11 years of tyranny is referring to. Um, but he wants to it, <clears throat> um, attempt, the, the king attempts to impose Anglicanism on Scotland. And he needs funds from Parliament. Okay, so he has to call Parliament here. And so here's what happens. The Parliament gave the funds that he needed, but with conditions. And they were able then to use this as an opportunity to um, Parliament to draw up a list of grievances. The King then had a, his battle with Parliament. Um, Oliver Cromwell, later known as Lord Protector, led an Ironside uh, army. And he actually ended up, uh, um, had success with the help of Scotland. Calvinist Presbyterianism, meaning coming from Scotland, became the official re religion of England, Scotland, and Ireland at this time. Um, I'm really briefly going over some really important uh, sections of this history. And I'll kind of kind of just talk about this a little bit more, and then we'll move on to the next, next section.